A sold out crowd converging on Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. All to watch Aaliyah Boston and the top seed in the women's NCAA tournament, South Carolina, who looks for their 40th straight win today with a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line when they face number eight South Florida at home. What a Sunday treat, though. All the stars out on ABC today. As mentioned, the defending champs looking to be the 10th undefeated national champion in history. And we've got Caitlin Clark and the number two Hawkeyes taking on Georgia at 3 Eastern. As we officially say hello and welcome in the studio, I'm Elle Duncan. She's Andrea Carter. Rebecca Lobo is here. We've got eight games on the slate, starting here with South Carolina, who is a 27 point under. Uh, of a who, South Florida, who's a 27-point underdog, what can they take from their Marquette game away today? Well, effort and resilience, and that might sound kind of bland, but in particular on the offensive glass. Now, South Florida gave up 18 offensive rebounds against Marquette, but they had 13 of their own, including the one that got them their first lead of the game. They have to try and keep it competitive on the glass against South Carolina. And they've been a good offensive rebounding team all season long. They've also been a very good three-point shooting team all season long, 31st in the nation in field goal percentage, but only two of 18 in their first round game. Going to have to hit from the outside against the South Carolina Bigs. We'll see how it plays out. Zia Cook didn't light up the stat sheet in the first round, but as her coach Don Staley says, she impacts the game in many ways. Courtney Lau, Carolyn Peck will take it from the other side. We'll see you at the half. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. South Carolina has won 39 games in a row on the hunt for back-to-back -back national titles. And one of the greatest to wear a South Carolina uniform is playing one more time in Columbia. What has Aaliyah brought to this team? It's really hard to put it into words. She really, really motivates the rest of this South Carolina team. I think Aaliyah's a glue to the team. She expects to be great every single day. South Carolina has captured its second national championship. South Carolina back-to-back -back champs. It would be a dream come true. That's a goal for Aaliyah Boston and the South Carolina team. She is the reigning National Player of the Year. 80 career double-doubles, second most in SEC history. But her mind is on a bigger prize, a second national championship for her trophy case. Let's go. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Aaliyah Boston came to South Carolina in her first career game, a triple-double. She wants to go out with another title. Aaliyah Boston is playing again to be, looks like the National Player of the Year to me. And I'm going to tell you why. It's more than the amount of points she scores, the amount of rebounds she gets. It's the effect that she has on her team. They're undefeated. you got to take the best player off the best team. And it's not just how she makes her teammates better that are on the court. She has the reserves ready as well. Well, Aaliyah Boston and South Carolina, they're going to have to get past South Florida today, a team that was down by 11, forced overtime on Friday. Friday to make it here today and Dulce Fanka Mingiadu she knows a thing about double doubles too she's fourth in the nation in that category and she's the third player in American Conference history with 20 plus points and 15 plus rebounds in an NCAA tournament game she was so efficient in the first round whenever South Florida was able to get Fanka Mingiadu the ball inside she was efficient eight for nine. Now she got in a little bit of foul trouble, but she was still able to stay on the court and she played for 42 minutes. She's going to have a tall task, and I mean that literally going against the size of South Carolina. South Carolina, one of the tallest teams in the nation. This whole senior class for South Carolina, they call them the Freshies. They have made so much history here with the Gamecocks. Looking for more, looking for the Sweet 16. And South Carolina controls the tip. Kiera Fletcher, the starting point guard for this Gamecock crew. And we're going to see, like we do, other teams that have played South Carolina, they're really going to look to try to protect the paint. Zaya Cook with the miss. Aaliyah Boston finds the basketball, but then Dulce Fanka Mingiadu with the takeaway. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups presented by Capital One. We told you about Fanka Mingiadu huh? and Elena Cheneke. They were the co-conference players of the year in the American. It is very rare that you see two players on the same team that are co-conference players of the year. Normally, 
the votes are split, but these two players made such an impact on the American Conference, you could not pick just one. South Florida got off to a slow start in its Friday first round game against Marquette. They trailed by 11, didn't lead until the final two minutes of the game to force overtime. Trying to go inside to Sammy Puisas, and it's going to be South Carolina ball. South Carolina starting five. You know them well if you've seen this Gamecock team play. Zaya Cook, Bree Beal, Leah Boston. Those are three of those freshies, that senior class we talked about. Jose Fernandez is really going to focus on sagging in the paint. The only real shooter they're worried about, and this will surprise you, he said Bree Beal. It won't surprise you. Not at all. Look, Bree Beal got herself into the starting lineup as a freshman because of her defensive abilities. And this year, that offense has shown up too. And what I've seen from Bree Beal this year, when open on the perimeter, there's no hesitation. There's no, oh, I recognize now I'm open. I have to shoot. When it comes to her, she is ready to pull the trigger. And Bree Beal and Aaliyah Boston, two of the four finalists for the defensive player of the year. This is going to stay with South Carolina. Well, Don Staley, look, she's focused on getting to the Sweet 16. We're focused on the numbers, too, though. Seeking her 400th win at South Carolina. It is incredible what she has built in Columbia. It's going to be an offensive foul on South Carolina. Like Don, Don Staley's, her fit today, Cheney State. Remember, Cheney State was led by Vivian Stringer to the first NCAA finals game when Cheney State played against Louisiana Tech. You got the Cheney State, uh, State jersey and the Louis Vuitton pants. Oh, that's a, <laughs> a winning combination. Take away for the Gamecocks. Fletcher's going to give it up to Zaya Cook, who's the leading scorer for South Carolina. Inside the Boston, Fanka Mingiato forcing her outside. She can hit that too. Boston is just, it's an overtime job trying to slow her down. She has proven that she can step away from the paint. She can finish even when there's contact. This is Elena Chineke, that co-conference player of the year. Up to Sammy Puisis, known for her three-point shooting, but did not hit one on Friday. Chineke connecting. And Elena Chineke was huge in that fourth quarter for South Florida. She went on a run. She had nine points in the fourth to help South Florida go to overtime. Boston covered up, though, able to get her the basketball anyway. And it's going to be South Florida ball. How physical South Florida is being with Aaliyah Boston, forcing her away, but you give her space. Still, that shot is pure. And getting off to an early start, Elena Cheneke finds space and knocks down the three. Jose Fernandez, South Florida's head coach, told us we are going to have to make shots all game, and it's multiple people that have to make shots to beat South Carolina. Well, he said his big three need to have about 20 points apiece in order for them to have a chance against South Carolina. Jose Fernandez, he, but this season, became the all-time wins leader in American Conference history when it comes to conference play, passing Gino Oriyama. Well, he's done so with recruiting not just outside of Florida, but outside the United States. The international flair has helped Fernandez to have so much success at South Florida. Yeah, nine international players, 13 total players on the South Florida roster. Three turnovers apiece in this game. This is Ariel Wilson, the point guard for South Florida. Carlo Brito back to Puisas, five seconds. Puisas blocked by Brie Beal. Beal with the crossover and it rolls out. Bulls come out with it. Chineke driving in on Saya Cook. Elena Chineke. Chineke getting off to a much better start today than they did against Marquette. And I asked Elena, how did she stay so focused and not really get frustrated, not able to score? 
and she said, my teammates just kept encouraging me and showed up right on time. Well, she only had two points in the first half. This is their leading scorer who averages 18 points a game. Ooh, that's going to be the second foul on Dulce Fanka Mingiadu. That's going to be huge, especially with South Carolina looking to go inside. Fanka Mingiano has gotten to Aaliyah Boston a little bit when she missed that shot, saw a motion coming from Boston. Let out a yell. Not able to finish. Now you mentioned it. Jose Fernandez told us we're going to pack it in the paint. Don't worry about the outside shot. Fanka Mingiadu is staying in the basketball game. Do you like that decision? Two fouls? Well, she got two fouls yesterday, or in the in the first round. Jose took her out, and then the game was starting to get out of hand. Ah, Poises with three. Hernandez trusted her and put her back in the game. She was able to play without fouls. He knows now he really can't afford to take her off the floor unless he absolutely has to. Zaya Cook with a rainbow to the bucket. Janeka in the lane. The floater bounces in. Did you see Elena Janeka gave small? the two small to Zaya Cook? These two are going to go at it today. Look, South Florida has never made it to the Sweet 16. South Carolina looking for its ninth straight appearance in that round of the tournament. Reveal, free throw line. Offense. Three for Chineke, it's off to the right. Puisa's offensive rebound. Brito guarded by Victoria Saxton. Saxton got a hand on it. The first look South Carolina has in transition. They check to see where Aaliyah Boston is. Cook, step back three. Going up ahead to Brito. Victoria Saxton got there in time. Shut her down. And then saved it while she was falling out of bounds. Fletcher and one. What makes South Carolina so good is that even when you think you got an open play, transition defense, they got erasers on the back side, then what do they do quickly? Turn that into an easy two. Bucket. from the South Florida team on Friday. They took their first lead with a minute 21 to go in regulation. Elena Chineke turned it up. Their leading scorer struggled in the first three quarters, but hey, she helped the Bulls get to this point. Marquette was focused on keeping Chineke out of the paint. Knew how she liked to attack and drive the basket, forcing her to outside shots. Believe that that kept Chineke off balance, but she was able to stay calm, cool, and collected. And once she came off a ball screen down the middle and then hit the three, the next possession down, the Bulls just took over. That's carried over to today. Chineke already has seven points. Puisa is looking for her second long ball of the game, no. Chineke underneath, blocked by Boston. South Florida has really made it difficult for South Carolina to get paint touches. Now, Johansson has the responsibility of Aaliyah Boston. Dulce on Camilla Cardoso, 6'7", underneath. They throw it up to Camilla. She's got to work her way back. Swats it back out, a fresh 20. Dulce Fankamingiato, two fouls for USF. That's number 32 in green. Jose Fernandez really trusting his senior. 
not to pick up that third. Five seconds. Cook coughs it up. Chineke one on one with Bree Beal. Let's Beal fly by, but it bounces out. And who didn't give up on the play but Aaliyah Boston? She's right there for the rebound. Here, Fletcher spinning, no. Camilla Cardoso hits. That's a secret weapon that South Carolina has. Camilla Cardoso can just clean up so much with her ability to work the glass. And what a luxury to bring her in off the bench. In her second season with South Carolina, starting her career at Syracuse. Off the fingertips of Fink of Mingiadu. You talk about secret weapons, too. South Carolina brings in Raven Johnson to run the offense off the bench. Don Staley has so many options of how she wants her team to play. They can play uh, lethargic and work on half-court execution, or they can speed things up. And I think this is their speed team when you have ra both Raven Johnson and Leticia Me here on the floor. Me here, number 15 in white. That's three bigs on the floor because at times the here can even swing to the four. Pretty move, trying to get her own rebound. Jump ball, possession arrow to the Bulls. Six oh one one for South Carolina right here. South Florida 0 oh for its last six. They haven't scored in three and a half minutes. Now, Raven Johnson has Cheneke. Brie Bill still on Sammy Puisis. And one of the things South Florida does is they run action with a lot of screens. M.A.O. Hobson from deep. Just her third made three-pointer of the season. Jose Fernandez said his team had to be special. So far, they have been exactly that. Raven will reset here. A little too high for Aaliyah. Ariel Wilson to the ground, gets it out to Chineke. Goes off the foot, and that's going to be a travel. Wilson rolled over with the basketball. Talk about the screening action of South Florida and using those screens to buy time. Wait, South Florida was able to call a timeout before the traveling violation. So you're going to see Dulce here. She's going to set the screen on Johansson, and she is able to get her feet set and knock that down. So no traveling violation. Instead, a timeout for South Florida. I'm going to take you back to that last play. Watch the upper right of your screen. Going to see Jose Fernandez is going to come. She, he's right there at the top. He's calling timeout. So we got that timeout called before the traveling violation on Ariel Wilson was whistled. Juliani Spurlock Wells saw it from across the court. Had her eye across the uh, all the way across to find Coach Fernandez calling that timeout. South Florida's made it tough on the only undefeated team in the land. A South Florida team that has tied its most wins in school history at 27 this season. They won the American Conference regular season championship for the second time. Never been to the Sweet 16. Ariel Wilson at the free throw line. Foul is on Leticia Me here. Coming into the first round of the NCAA tournament, Ariel Wilson had made 13 field goals all year. And now she has really come on the scene, bringing some offense for South Florida Bulls. Yeah, she has been that gritty player, that point guard that's facilitating. She's also known to step up and take a charge at any minute. 6-0 run now for South Florida. What defensively has been bothering South Carolina? Well, just really crowding inside in the post, being very physical with both Camilla Cardoso and Aaliyah Boston. And then South Carolina has not been able to finish layups. Before that timeout, they were two for seven 
just on layups alone. South Carolina just 36% from the field. Cheneke with time winding down. Weaving around, Wilson's gonna have to take the three. And after 10 minutes of play, South Florida is on top of the number one team in the nation. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Everybody's trying to get to Texas. Remember, two regional sites this year, Greenville and Seattle, and then four teams will make their way to Dallas for the Final Four, which starts March 31st. Winner of this game is moving on to Greenville to play in the Sweet 16, South Carolina and South Florida. Don't forget, we're gonna have Iowa and Caitlin Clark coming up for you later today, right after this game. But this is just the seventh time that South Carolina has trailed after the first quarter of the season. The defense has been key for South Florida, how physical they have been able to be. And Fanka Vigiadu has two fouls, and Jose Fernandez has left her on the floor, and she has been able to stay. And that's number 32 in green. Leticia Meher trying to get around Johansson. And look, Jose Fernandez, when he left Fanka Vigiadu out there, he said, hey, do Don't not foul. foul. <laughs> and she, foul, she followed instructions. And look, she is still able to defend inside, and she's doing with her feet. She has great lower base and able to keep her balance against the power of the bigs of South Carolina. The co-American Conference Player of the Year, along with her teammate, Chineke. There's Dulce. Looking for her first shot attempt. Gets it up over 6'7", Camila Cardoso. Now, Ami here has moved from a three to the four with Cardoso inside. South Carolina gets over 44 points a game, points in the paint. They have really had a tough time getting that today, only two. And they're used to shooting 55% in the paint. Check that, four points in the paint. Cheneke back to Johansson, no. Raven Johnson trying to go fast. Bree Hall didn't have time to get the shot off. Wilson was right there, and Zaya Cook will pull it out. Cook for two. Switch. South Carolina can go plan A. If that's not working, Don Staley can go to plan B. She even also has C and D. Man, that's already been a battle, those two. When I asked Dawn Staley, was she going to put Brie Beal on Chineke? She said, uh uh, it's going to be Zaya Cook. Block returned by Ariel Wilson. The battle between these two guards, they're going to have to make a me major impact on their team. If point paint points are hard to come by, the guards are gonna have to step it up. Fanga Mingiato with some patience in the paint. Those are her first points on her second shot. Jose Fernandez's plan was gotta make open shots, gotta score in transition, and you gotta defend. Camila Cardoso will go to the free throw line. South Carolina getting some looks under the basket, but as you said, really struggling to finish. And focusing more on the contact down low than the finish. And sometimes that can become an epidemic. You see a few players early missing shots, you start overthinking, it makes that basket, even though you're that close, get smaller and smaller and smaller. Foul was on Emma Johansson, her first. Ah! 
two for Cardoso, and Aaliyah Boston will come back replacing Camilla. Now, Doug Staley's already played eight players. Remember in round one, South Florida had four players that played 40 plus minutes. Now, I know they had a day in between, but South Carolina continue can run fresh bodies at you and that can wear you down. And Jose Fernandez, we asked him about that. Are you worried about the legs? He said, no, I'm not, we're used to it. But still, with all that South Carolina can bring off the bench. But he's, Jose Fernandez has those international players. They come in, they've been working like pros since day one. Brito for two off the side of the backboard. She got the ball up and in. Who pushes that? It's Raven Johnson. This freshman makes things go. Speed, she finds you even when you're not looking for it. And then Breezy Hall able to finish and get the potential and one from the free throw line. That's the second foul on Ariel Wilson. Staley was asking about. I'm not sure. <laughs> Tineke got a lane violation. Bray Hall will get to do this again. Gamecocks back on top. Fourth time we've seen a lead change. South Florida led at the end of the first quarter. I like this matchup between these two. Cook and Cheneke. And Cook's going to be whistled for the foul. like a one-on-one -on -one pickup game there for a second. Yeah, but that's the first one on Cook. If Jose Fernandez recognizes how determined Cook is, continue to play off those ball screens, ball screens, re-screen. Beautiful shot from Sammy Puisis on the inbounds. She's got five. These plays were so calm yesterday in practice, and they had no hesitation of, we know that we have to be special on Sunday, and so far they have been. Saxton to Boston, fouled on the floor. Ball screen action, South Florida is so good. Johansson sets the screen and just buys just a second of time for Sammy and she's able to knock it down. Sammy Puis is the transfer from Florida State. Boston alone, can't let her do that. She's dangerous. Five points, four rebounds for Aaliyah. The defense, Raven Johnson keeping the ball there. Cook's got it. And she's fouled. Look at Aaliyah Boston gathering her teammates up. Here's the common factor that you have if you're South Carolina. You can get the ball to Aaliyah Boston, but check out the post player, fakes the handoff and keeps it. Tricks everybody. Tricks are for kids, silly rabbit. I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> First foul whistled against Chineke, Zaya Cook at the free throw line. Zaya Cook and, Cheke and uh, Chineke, that's a game within a game. Watching those two guards go at it. It's going to be fun. Swing it over to Carla Brito. She thought about it, taking it in instead. Bree Hall crashing the glass. Defense, 
There's a mismatch. Uh, they could switch back. Wilson was on Saxon. South Carolina didn't recognize. Doesn't matter. Victoria Saxon, she can leap out of this gym to get that basketball. South Carolina is getting very fortunate because they're not able to finish layups but getting to the free throw line. But they do have the advantage of being able to throw over the top of most teams in the country. Well, the NCAA championship Final Four weekend starts March 31st with the Final Four and continues Sunday, April 2nd, when we crown a champion every game on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. If you like this, stay tuned for after this game. You'll get to see Iowa and Georgia. We've got women's basketball for you all day here on ABC. That means you get to see Caitlin Clark of Iowa. I had to get an extra shot of caffeine this morning, staying up so late watching games last night. How lucky are we? Aaliyah Boston in this game, Caitlin Clark in the next game. Stars all day. Trying to go up for it. Possession arrow is going to stay with South Carolina. We step aside. South Carolina up by three. Only four, only four points in the paint, or six points in the paint. Only four second chance points. Understand, South Carolina averages over 44 points a game from in the paint. They've got to be able to finish the layups. And it's been a problem. That's going to be an offensive foul on Aaliyah Boston. Her first. But Aaliyah made that difficult on herself. Coming back to the right, she had the left-handed lane. But Fanka Mengiato recognized that she was going to be there. And immediately, Jose Fernandez took her out. Or was that? That it was Gonzalez. Gonzalez, yes. Gonzalez was able to draw the charge. Mengiato. Fanka Nanjiadu is on the, on the mid. Chideke's got nine. A much better start for her than Friday. She only had two points in the first half. USF's leading scorer. If there's anybody to get the ball to the post, it's Raven Johnson. You give it to Aaliyah Boston, she goes to work. Seven points, five rebounds for Aaliyah Boston. Chaneke is blocked by Saxton, up ahead to Cook. Saxton did not quit the heart and soul of South Carolina. She's done it for four years. Or five. Victoria Saxton. Four years as a captain. Gonzalez. They'll feed Saxton. And she's fouled. This on Chineke, her second. You gotta get to post the ball at the right time when they've gained the advantage. Watch Raven Johnson, as soon as she comes off the screen, no hesitation, and leads Boston right into the score before the defense could rotate over. Raven Johnson, she's had some big moments this season. She had to start the SEC Tournament Championship game because Kiera Fletcher was unavailable. She played 30 plus minutes in the UConn game because Whatever she was doing was working, and Kira Fletcher told her in the game, it's yours, take it. And Aaliyah Boston told her, we're not going to let you fail. When you have the seniors around you to help you. But we have seen Don Staley talk about Raven Johnson loves this freshman's instincts. Now 
Alvarez was here last year when USF made it to Columbia for the tournament, but she had just injured her knee and wasn't able to play. She's tripped up in the lane. Cook hands it back. Alvarez. Rebound by Puisis and the putback. The Bulls are not going away. That ends a 6-0 run for South Carolina. Marquette was able to make their runs on Friday, and South Florida just hung around and hung around and hung around to take it to overtime. Inside to Boston, there she goes. She'll find a way. You take away her first option, you think you've got her slowed down, she's got plan B. Janike covered up. Now Johansson double team, South Carolina ball. And Don Staley will call timeout here, a minute 17 in the half. South Carolina has won 39 straight games, but they have been pushed today. They trailed after the first 10 minutes. They've struggled offensively to score, but their defense has still been intact, only allowing South Florida 24 points in this first half. And that's one of the things they've been able to hang their head on. And Aaliyah Boston, she's finding a way right now, 9.7 rebounds. Well, that's why she's the reigning national player of the year, because when South Carolina needs an answer, they know they can go to number four in white. Aaliyah Boston never gets rattled. She's calm, cool, and collected, and can be the go-to for the Gamecocks. Her last time playing in Columbia, you know there's going to be some motivation there motivation there's probably a, some emotion she loves this place she loves what South Carolina the city has given to her and what Don Staley has meant to her bringing her here so you know she's wanting to give it her all in this last appearance projected to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft coming up in April hook floater won't go Alvarez with the rebound a minute till the half Police is going right over Boston. Police can find scoring opportunities. She said she knows everybody knows her as a three-point shooter. She was aggressive on Friday, attacking that time off a of curl screen. Nine points now for Sammy Police. She hit 14 in that Friday game against Marquette. No three-pointers, which is rare for her. Boston to the high post. Seven seconds. Cook for two. Yes. Nine points for Zaya Cook. South Florida can take the final shot of the half. Cheneke to the corner. Got it! Back and forth we go. What a ball game. Winner to the Sweet 16. Aaliyah Boston has nine points. Seven rebounds and a block. South Carolina up at the break. Let's get you back to Al in the studio. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Aaliyah Boston, the reigning national player of the year, her and the Gamecocks being pushed by the South Florida Bulls here in the second round. Both of these teams trying to get to the Sweet 16. We welcome you back to Columbia. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. We saw South Florida lead after the first 10 minutes in this game. Still a close ball game. How have they pushed number one South Carolina? 
South Florida has done a terrific job of putting the paint under construction. It has been very difficult for South Carolina to be able to get anything easy. And if they got the ball inside, they've not been able to finish their layups. Only 12 paint points. Remember, South Carolina, they average 44.5 points in the paint. They haven't come that easy today. Well, it's time now to take a look at our difference makers brought to you by CarMax. And it's the battle between Elena Cheneke and Zaya Cook. This is a game within a game between these two players. I think there's a little chatter going on between these two, but they are going to have to be the difference made for each of their teams because of how physical it has been inside. What can these guards do outside to help this team, their team, advance to the Sweet 16? South Florida has never been to the Sweet 16. South Carolina is trying to make it nine straight and trying to continue that run to back-to-back -back national titles. Kelsey Fink of Minjiatu, she got in foul trouble but still played with two fouls. The majority of the first half played 13 minutes. Boston back to Cook. Now the first possession, South Florida ran an isolation overload, trying to go straight at ball, straight at Boston with Fanka Mingiato. Timmy Puisis, they'll go back inside to Dulce Fanka Mingiato, working one on one against Aaliyah Boston. It's a tough thing to do. Garrett Fletcher saves it. It'll be South Carolina ball. Now the defensive assignments have changed up as well. Zaya Cook, Don Staley has on Ariel Wilson, and Kiara Fletcher now has the responsibility of Tineke. Beal looking inside, nothing, swings it over to Cook. Boston will come and get it. Takes the mid-range. Still tough to get going inside in the paint for South Carolina. And I'm watching South Florida on the shot when they're on defense. They're anticipating positioning for their box out, so they're making it difficult for South Carolina to get second chance points. Wilson driving and kicks. Luisa has it poked away. It'll stay with the Bulls. South Carolina has won 39 straight games. Their last loss coming in last year's SEC Tournament Championship game. Puistas. Carla Brito for the rebound to the free throw line. Brito is battling with Victoria Saxon. She got the defensive rebound on the other end and now being very active offensively to get inside and create extra possessions. Carla Brito, a true freshman out of Spain. With a lot of international experience. I was reading an article, her teammate Elena Cheneke was talking about Carla and she said, look, she's a totally different person from when I first met her. Her confidence has skyrocketed. She doesn't play like a freshman at no. all. She is that blue collar, hard hat player on the floor, just willing to do the little things, dive out of bounds, get rebounds, get deflections, really muscle up inside. She's an undersized post player. Those are her first points today. She had 15 in the first round on Friday. Look how she's battling with Victoria Saxon inside, using all she's got. And she's international. She knows all the tricks of the game. Zaya Cook, she's into double figures. And Cheneke isn't guarding Zaya Cook to start this third quarter. I think both coaches were giving those two a little break from each other. Zaya oh, they're back. Back on Cheneke. Reunited. Does it feel so good? We'll see. It's entertaining, that's for sure. I uh, got a switch. Cheneke working around Boston, can't do it. Fletcher back to the free throw line. You know, Kiera Fletcher wasn't available in that SEC Tournament Championship game. After the game, Don Staley said in the press conference, we can't win a national championship without Kiera. 
when I asked Dawn, how did Raven get through that game? And she said it was first name she mentioned was Kiera Fletcher. She drives in and draws the third foul against Dulce Fink of Minjiadu. Jose Fernandez has got some, got some thinking to do. Do you leave her out there? It's a five-point game right now. Do you risk her picking up fourth? I think not. It's going to be a risk if you do. She averages a double-double. She's been a good presence defensively and offensively inside for South Florida today. She's still out there. Now if Johansson comes in, now that's a th another three-point threat for South Florida, and she held her own in the first half. Yeah, hit a three in the first half. Brito in the corner. Puisis recovers six seconds, guarded by Bree Beal. Had her shot blocked by Victoria Saxton. Going up ahead to Cook. Look at that! Cook it up! <laughs> South Florida calls timeout. Gamecocks with its largest lead. Largest lead of the day for South Carolina. We were just looking at the athleticism of South Carolina, no matter who they put on the floor, specifically in the post. The luxury that South Carolina has is they have bigs that can defend away from the basket. Check right here. That's Victoria Saxton on Faka Mingiadu down low. But once the ball goes to Sammy Puisis and USF or South Florida sets the ball screen, Victoria Saxton has the reach and the athleticism to switch and get the block and then get out and run in the floor. There were three options there for South Carolina for the two. It was so big when Victoria Saxon decided to come back for a fifth season at South Carolina. Her leadership, her willingness to do all the little things that turn into big things for the Gamecocks. She's done that since day one she got to South Carolina. Elena Chineke rocking the baby. Well, <laughs> she's given it too small. She's put it out, and now she's put you to sleep. There's a game within the game between these two, Cook and Chineke. Entertainment. Is that what you would call picture in picture? Love it. <laughs> well, a big question for South Carolina last year was not only Victoria Saxon coming back, but how would you fill the void of Destiny Henderson? The combination of Kiera Fletcher and Raven Johnson has been able to answer that call. This is a deep three, too much. Rebound by Bree Beal. And then she's fouled by Chineke. That's the third on Elena Chineke. So now the American co-players of the year both playing with three fouls. Dulce Fink and Minjiadu and Elena Chineke, number five and number 32 for South Florida. Zaya Cook could go off right now because Chineke is going to have to be careful in order to stay on the floor. Boston can't get around Brito. Zaya Cook top of the key too much. Boston finds her way to the basketball. Second putback won't go for South Carolina. Cook's not done. And 
forth we go. The battle within the battle. Elena Cheneke facing Zaya Cook. Cook's got a response. This is a fun one in Colombia. Winner, go to the Sweet 16. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. So South Carolina up 45-33. Our officials went to the monitor and they upgraded the last foul by Carla Brito to an intentional foul. Anyone for South Carolina can shoot the two free throws and then South Carolina will get the basketball. This does count towards Brito's personal fouls, obviously, and the team foul count. So the officials come over and we confirm that. And Zaya Cook will take these two free throws. So this is the play. Watch 55 and green. She goes to the floor. And then grabs her around the leg, not making a play on the basketball. So Brito now with three personal fouls. That means Brito, Finka, Mingiadu, and Chineke all with three fouls for South Florida. South Carolina on a 13-2 run. Now that's the same pick the picker play when Taneke hit the three yesterday against Marquette. There was a great switch by South Carolina. She wasn't able to be available. Fanka Mengiadu whistled for the travel. South Florida led after 10 minutes, but they were outscored in the second quarter 21 to 13 by South Carolina. And since that first quarter, plus 17 for the Gamecocks. Kelsey Frank Mengiato really battling with Boston out low. Saxton misses. Alvarez with the rebound. Brito rejected by Saxton. The timing that Victoria Saxton has. She waits till the ball is released. Tee it up, swat it down, number five in white. Eight blocks for South Carolina today. Victoria Saxton has four. I am not surprised. South Carolina has set a new SEC record for blocks this season, over 300. Janeke looking for a triple, buried it. 17 points for Elena Chineke, right at her season average per game. Now Cardoso and Boston will try to work inside. Cardoso against Fanka Mingiadu, the kick back out to Bree Hall. Hall baseline rolls around and out. Foul on the floor on Aaliyah Boston, her second. The locals are not a fan of that call. <laughs> oh, that's a nice move. Can't able to finish. Little shot fake. You better work, Bree Beal. Bully ball. Janeke, no, not here. Nine 
17 blocks for the Gamecocks. Versatile options that South Carolina has. And it's not just on the offensive end, but defensively. You had Victoria Saxton in the starting lineup that already had four blocks. Camilla Cardoso, she came to the party. Look, South Carolina has blocked 20% of its opponent's two-point attempts. That is first in the nation. Police is looking for space, overshoots, going against Cardoso. This is the number one team. Defensive field goal percentage. Breezy Hall. Ami here with the rebound. Does it again? The putback. Fanka Minjiadu getting the kick out. Uh-oh, give it to the big girl out on the break. Missed it. Two good looks. Couldn't get it to drop. But the difficult thing against South Carolina, they may miss their first one. Oh, and their second one. But they can get the third one as well. They are just monsters on the offensive boards. They average 19 second chance points per game. Now only 11 today. Bree Hall fights to get it back. Shot clock did not reset. Raven Johnson's going to shoot it. Two offensive rebounds for Breezy. That's what I'm talking about. And it's not just the post players, guards as well. Get on the glass. Raven gets the call from Don Staley. She'll have eight seconds to work with here. And South Carolina ran out of time. That clock awareness. And you see Raven Johnson, the freshman, talking to Breezy Hall of, like, you got to rip and go. There's not a t enough time for a pass there. You got to get the shot off. South Carolina has been able to pull ahead here in the third quarter. South Florida only seven points here in the third. Takeaway. Up ahead to a knee here. She was pushed from behind by Emma Johansson. That's her third. Everybody that gets on the floor with Raven Johnson knows you better run because she's pushing it. She's pushing. She threaded a little needle there to get it to L.A. and L.A. was able to come up with it. Well, Leticia Meter told us, Raven pushes me to run down the floor because she said, I'll get you the basketball, just go. Free Hall all over the offensive glass. South Florida needs a bucket here to finish this quarter. They have not scored in three minutes. Janeke misses. South Carolina ball, 17.6 on the clock. And who does Don Staley go to? Won't let her. Won't let her come in. She was at the table before the ball. Okay, so they will sub in Zaya Cook to replace Raven Johnson. That's going to be a high ball screen. Cookie time. Ariel Wilson did a good job defending Cook. Point seven is on the clock right now. Now, this got to be a lob for Leticia and me here in the middle. They're taking a look at the clock right now. And 2.3, 2.2, and they put 2.1 on the clock. Watch Bree Hall. South Carolina can catch and shoot. 
Bucks for Breezy. Basket is under review to make sure it was released prior to the expiration of the quarter. Gamecocks ending the third on a 19 to five run. Hit it, Prehall. Well, thank you. South Carolina was able to stretch its lead in the third quarter, outscoring South Florida 19 to seven. Winner of this game, going to the Sweet 16, they'll get either UCLA or Oklahoma. South Florida has never been to the Sweet 16. South Carolina looking for its ninth straight trip. What changed in the third quarter, Peck? Well, South Carolina turned their defense up. They were not allowing South Florida to score. And then just the dominance on the glass and now being able to get points in the paint. They have 20. They have a total now of 21 offensive rebounds. South Florida did not score in the final three and a half minutes of the third quarter. Zaya Cook short. She's got 18 points today, though. Chineke has 17. She's leading South Florida. Thank you, Minjiadu, working again against Leticia Me here. And the scoring drought continuing for the Bulls. The other thing that has changed, Bree Hall on Elena Chineke bringing more length, making it a little difficult for number five in green. Mm. Kira Fletcher coming out with it. Yes! And then throws it away. South Florida, Sammy Poises has got to get involved as well. And just nine points for her. She averages 16 a game, known as a three-point shooter. This stays with the Bulls. Also, Dulce Fankamingiato, just two points. And Zaya Cook is matched up again with Elena Cheneke. Those two have re really been going back and forth. You know, we saw the little rock the baby, then rocked it back. Oh, they've been talking. <laughs> they've been hitting shots against each other. Oh, nasty! Leticia, me here! The defense of South Carolina has been smothering in this second half. 14th time this season they have had double figure blocks in a game. 10 blocks for South Carolina. Tisha Me here was fantastic in the SEC tournament. So good that Aaliyah Boston gave her all tournament trophy. She told us, you know, when it's your last SEC tournament, it feels a little bit different. Bree Hall has been an important piece here in the second half. How valuable will she be? The Freshies will be gone next year. But the future is bright for the Gamecocks. Yeah, Bree Hall, seven points, five rebounds. This is the final game for those Freshies. That's the senior class. It's what South Carolina calls them, the Freshies. Came in as the number one recruiting class in the nation in 2019. They've only lost eight career games. Leticia Me here is one of them, too. They have come in as a group. Their chemistry is tight, and they have been successful. Timeout called a 25 to five run for the number one team in the nation. Letitia Ami here. Look, she came to South Carolina early. She is finishing with a bang, gets the block, then out in transition.
transition, the Canada connection for two. South Carolina, they're playing with a full deck when it comes to that starting hand. Well, Don Staley can get out to a great start with the five that she has on the floor. But when she wants to speed things up and she goes to the runner runner, then she moves in Letitia here and Raven Johnson. Then when she wants to go to the big hand, put Camilla Cardoso on the floor. The versatility, the different ways South Carolina can play. Look, Don Staley always has a trump up her sleeve. And all season, she's had the winning hand. Look at last year compared to this year. The biggest difference, bench points per game. 17th in the nation last year, first in the nation this year. They're getting 37 points per game from the bench. That is impressive. I'm not gonna say ridiculous, because it happens, but it is extremely impressive and a nightmare for the opponents that they match because most teams have a really strong first team and they feel really good when they're able to hold South Carolina starting five. But then South Carolina goes to the next wave and it is just a nightmare to deal with. It's been multiple combinations today for South Carolina. They're outscoring their opponent's bench by almost 25 points per game. That's the best since 99, 2000. Wow. Four seconds. Meanwhile, the scoring has dried up for South Florida. And another block for South Carolina. Just two made field goals in this half for the Bulls. South, South Florida, they're not a pressing team. Jose Fernandez has talked about that. To get back into this game, and that would be an option you may take a look at because you've got to start quickening possessions, try to force South Carolina to the, turn the ball over. Look at the pass all the way up ahead to Leticia Me here. And she traveled. As I Cook was wide open on the back side, begging for it. Eight minutes without points for South Florida. So that part's gonna have to look at doing some quick hits. They can't use a lot of time. They gotta go score as quickly and often as they can. Marina Asensio with a bucket, the first points in eight minutes for the Bulls. Leah Boston, nine points, 10 rebounds. She sends it over to Cook. Look at her go. 21 points for Zaya Cook, the eighth time this season she's gone over 20 points. Family in the stands watching her cook. This is the best season of Zaya Cook's career. Everything has started to come together for number one in white. Raven Johnson with a takeaway. Raven with the land. This is a little combination between the big hand and the runner runner. You got Cardoso in the game along with the speed of, Zy of Raven Johnson and Leticia V here. We know Raven loves to play with Camilla Cardoso. <laughs> yes, she does. Yeah, Raven told us when she was told she was going to start the SEC Tournament Championship game, she was a little down about it. She said, look, I just really like playing with Camilla. I, I would, too. <laughs> I mean, that's 6-7. You're not going to have too many turnovers throwing it to that target. Well, me here's got eight. Look, those two, that's the future for South Carolina. Hard to believe this is the final time that this South Carolina senior class is going to play here in Colonial Life Arena. Defensive board for me here, and she's fouled. Well, let's turn to protect this house presented by Under Armour. 
This South Carolina team at home, yeah, they've protected their house 41 straight wins. They've outscored their opponents at home by 30 and a half points per game. With the attendance records that Don Staley has set here in Colonial Life Arena, this crew has definitely entertained them thoroughly. Zaya Cook taking a seat, 325 to go. Twenty-one points for Zaya. Well, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Hey. Got Zaya Cook and Bree Bill on the bench right now. Part of that freshy class. Well, Zaya Cook, I'm so happy for her, her this last season because she has pressed for three, wanting to do great things. And she's so competitive. And at times, this first thing, the game has come together for her in her final season. Now, the mental side, she talked about how much she has grown in that area, and that's helped her produce the numbers. We were expecting coming in. I mean, she's known as a great scorer, and she has been a great scorer in South Carolina. And she's been a big moment player. Yes. We have seen her knock down some great shots at crucial times against some top-ranked teams. Boston, double-double for Aaliyah, her 81st career double-double. John Staley will take a timeout to make some subs. The fans in South Carolina on their feet. The final home game for this historic senior class. They came in as the number one recruiting class in the country. High expectations in their freshman year. They finished the regular, they finished the season because it was closed early because of COVID with the overall number one ranking that went on last season to win the national championship and trying to repeat this year. Coach Staley will sub out Raven Johnson and Bree Hall. You remember watching this fresh, this senior class as freshmen for the first time? Oh, and so impressed. And you had three of them that were in the starting lineup with Bree Bill, Aaliyah Boston, and Zaya Cook. Leticia Me here as she recovered from the ACL she had torn her in her senior year of high school. The athleticism that she's had. Well, there's a freshman. The future is bright for the Gamecocks with Ashley Watkins. South Carolina trailed after the first quarter, just the seventh time they've trailed after the first quarter all season. But as we've seen with this Gamecock team, they figure it out. They have so many combinations they can bring in off the bench. No puzzle has been too tough for the Gamecocks. Well, that's the thing. It's almost like you're playing a puzzle with Silly Putty with South Carolina. If that doesn't fit, you can find something that does because Don has so many options. No, they won't owe to score. <laughs> and Olivia Thompson, one of those seniors. Ask on Staley about Olivia Thompson. She's part of that freshman class. Gets the least amount of minutes. And Don Staley said, let me tell you, in life, she's going to get back 100% what she has given to this program. She is all in, and her value will come to her one day, even after her basketball career is over. Bucket, Ashlyn Watkins. 
under a minute to go. South Carolina, they can feel the Sweet 16. Puisis is fouled by Kitts. And it'll be interesting to watch the UCLA-Oklahoma game. Oklahoma's got the three-point shooters, and UCLA familiar with South Carolina. They played them earlier this season. Yeah, back in December. And UCLA has improved since then, but so has South Carolina. And look at all that talent, though, sitting right there on the bench. Don't forget, coming up, you've seen Aaliyah Boston. She's a star on display here. Coming up next, don't forget, we have Caitlin Clark, a triple-double machine. She's going to take on Georgia. That's coming up next here on ABC. Georgia plays a matchup, and they have a player on their team that loves, and I mean loves, some defense in diamond battles. So I can't wait to see those two go head-to-head. The fans stood up for that. Olivia Thompson coming in and hitting the three. One of these freshies. How rewarding with all she's given to this program to finish her final game here, knocking down that three. 40 straight wins for South Carolina. They are on to their ninth straight Sweet 16. Dulce Fanka Mingiadu, Elena Cheneke, it has been a pleasure to watch them throughout their careers at South Florida, the co-conference players of the year, but South Florida going home. South Carolina continuing on as it tries to repeat as national champion. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. It's going to live. Olivia Thompson. Look, she's worked on her three her whole career. And look at how, oh, the bench loves it. Hit your dance, Aaliyah Boston. South Carolina is moving on to the Sweet 16. Still, no one has been able to take down the Gamecocks. 76-45 is your final score. A ninth straight Sweet 16 for this South Carolina team. Let's get it back to you, L. Elle, thank you. Her 81st career double-double today. Aaliyah, your final home game here in Columbia. What did it feel like? Um, it was a great game, um, great atmosphere. It kind of just hit at the end. We all kind of got together and was like, guys, this is our last home game together as a group, and that's kind of crazy, but it was amazing. What kind of feelings were going? Were there emotions, especially in that first quarter, a little slow start? Do you think emotions had something to do with that? I think we were just trying to figure them out a little bit, understand the physicality of the game and how it was going to feel like, but, I mean, once we got rolling, we kept it. Can we talk about your fellow freshie, Zaya Cook, and mm -hmm. the career that she has had, the season she's had in her senior year as you all advance to the Sweet I 16? I mean, Zaya is unbelievable. She has put in so much work, and to see it all come together senior year, it's just something special. I think she opens up the floor for everybody. Um, she's a great defender. You see her active. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, she's just been playing really well. Yeah, she got in a battle with Chineke today. Yes. It was fun to watch. Yeah. Aaliyah, 40 straight wins. What has been the biggest factor for this program to go on that run? Definitely just discipline. I think Coach Daly has instilled that in us, um, each of us, since we stepped on the court. Um, and it's just been what we do. We want to play South Carolina basketball, push pace, just be aggressive, be great defenders, and I think it works. And not only the discipline, the depth that you all have. I mean, how key is that going to be as you all continue with what you all are able to get from your reserves? It's going to be major. You know, Coach, before every game, she says bench production is key. We have the best bench. Seriously, I think our depth, just like you said, just makes it hard for teams, and it, there's never a drop-off. I say this all the time because it's, it's true. Every time somebody steps on the floor from the bench, I mean, they just keep it rolling.
You guys are moving on to Greenville to the Sweet 16, the ninth straight Sweet 16 for South Carolina. What's going to be key for you guys moving forward? Just continue to play team basketball. I think understanding, being able to adjust on um, mid-game time, that's going to be key. But I think we're just doing really well. We're going to stay on this track. Aaliyah Boston, the reigning National Player of the Year. Al, back to you. South Carolina moving on. Yes, they are. Thanks, Courtney and CP. You just heard Aaliyah talk about the bench. A lot's made about her, but, man, they're deep. Yeah, I, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you have Teneca, who scored 20, and then Puises, who scored 11. That's one point higher than South Carolina's bench. South mm -hmm. Carolina's bench scored 30 points today. They just have so much depth coming at you in waves. That's that cumulative effect that we've talked about all season. South Florida had 16 second-half points.